Well, good evening, everyone. Michael Soothing here. Also, ASMR Theology, because I'm going to post this Easter Jesus is Risen video on both channels. Uh, if you're watching this on my normal ASMR channel, Michael Soothing ASMR, I've been doing a series <clears throat> in the book of John, the Gospel of John, going through that entire book on my ASMR Theology channel. So we did a video for Good Friday about the trial and crucifixion of Jesus. And now, on the day that he has risen, he has risen indeed, um, we will do the final two chapters of John. The resurrection of Jesus, the empty tomb. And in the future, on ASMR Theology, I will also do additional videos on the evidence for Jesus' resurrection and things like that. But today we'll just read through the text with a little bit of commentary. All right, I'm going to reorient the camera so that we can look at the scripture itself while reading and page turning. I hope you're going to have a nice Easter and um, remember the purpose and the meaning behind it if you are so inclined. Hold on for one moment. Okay, so Jesus was brought before uh, several interrogations on that uh, the night before and the day of his crucifixion. He was brought to uh, Annas and Caiaphas and also King Herod and then finally to Pilate and <clears throat> sentenced to be crucified. And so we finish that in chapter 19 and now we're coming to chapter 20, the empty tomb. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one that Jesus loved, that would be Apostle John himself, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both of them were running, but the other disciple outran Peter. Notice John's kind of, you know, bragging about how he outran Peter, which I think is a little bit humorous. But he was afraid to go in when, we, when they got there. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and he believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. They had no expectation that Jesus was going to rise from the dead until he did it. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, remember it's probably still 
dawn. It's not quite light yet. Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them I am returning to the Father, to my Father, and to your Father, to my God and to your God. Let's turn this off there. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone their sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and my hand to his side, I will not believe it. I can kind of relate to Thomas because he's a skeptic and he wants to see things for himself. It wasn't necessarily a bad thing that he wanted to do a verification. A week later, his disciples were in the home again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it to my side and stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. He actually in the Greek called it Jesus Theos, which is the word for God himself. So, and of course Jesus didn't correct him because he indeed is God and made that claim several times, contrary to what you might hear from those skeptics who say Jesus never claimed to be God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen, and yet have believed. And Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, also known as the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat. They didn't know what to do. After Jesus' resurrection, they were waiting to see what he would, what he would do. And so when you're in doubt, just go fishing, is what Peter said. So I can, I can get on with that. They went and got in the boat, but that night they caught nothing. They were skunked. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. It was probably, again, once again, not all fully light yet. It's the best time to fish. 
He called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. And he said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. When they did so, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and he jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there, with fish already on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore, and it was full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three, but even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and he did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus had appeared to his disciples after he had been raised from the dead. By the way, he had many other independent and separate appearances recorded in the other Gospels. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my lambs. Again Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, Take care of my sheep. Then a third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Now Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, Feed my sheep. I See, this is where, because Peter had denied Jesus three times, Jesus wanted him to reaffirm three times his love for Jesus and his coming sacrifice. He was going to be a completely changed man after the resurrection. Actually, all the apostles were completely changed. No longer afraid and cowards, they proclaimed the gospel, even when almost all of them went to their death doing so, other than John himself. So Jesus said a third time, Feed my sheep. I tell you the truth. When you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you were old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and they will lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and said, Lord, who is going to betray you? So when Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Jesus answered, If I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. Because of this, the rumor spread among the brothers that this disciple would not die. But Jesus did not say that he would not die. He only said, If I want him to remain until I return, what is that to you? This is the disciple who testifies to these things and who wrote them down. We know that his testimony is true. Jesus did many other things as well. And if every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. All right.
that is the end of the Gospel of John. In the future, on the ASMR Theology channel, we will delve into new topics. Probably not a straight read through. I'll probably make a video on what it means to be and have the Christian faith and eternal life. I'll make a video about that topic. And after that, we'll get into some other interesting and perhaps controversial topics like creationism. Is the earth old? Is the earth 4.6 billion years old? Or is it 10,000 years old? Or does it really matter? Some things like that. I've got a long list and uh, so I'm looking forward in the coming year summer and fall to doing some of those videos and having interesting interaction. So everyone, I hope you have a great Easter. God bless you all. Take care. Don't ASMR and drive. Bye-bye.